Today we start China map lesson. So you're going to need the map lesson instructions, the world atlas, and a blank sheet of notebook paper. So let's just go ahead and set up our blank sheet of notebook paper first. So we're going to put it up here, China map lesson. Let me zoom in for you. There we go. And the first section is always observations. Observations. And you're going to need five of those. One, two, three, four, and five. And then draw a line under the fifth one and write map questions. Okay, and just put a number one. We'll number the rest of them as we go along. So there's our paper, observations, five, and map questions. Now if we look at this, starting at the top, right here, do not write in the student atlas booklet. You guys have been pretty good about that, but some of you put little dots and things in there when you find stuff, so don't do that. First, take five minutes and peruse through the entire student world atlas. List at least five observations that you can make about what maps can show by looking at the different maps in the atlas. All right, so just as an example, if I take this map and I flop it right open to page 71, I can see quickly that this is a, what kind of map is this? There, upper left hand corner, right here, the key. The title of the key usually tells you what kind of map it is. So in this case, this is a population map. And the darker the color, the more people live in those regions. So if I looked at this map, I could quickly see that more people live in the eastern half of the United States than the western half. All right. And I could also say, well, look at this area up here in the New York area. And I could make an observation here and I could say a lot of people live right in this line along New York, Philadelphia and Baltimore. See, New York, Philadelphia and Baltimore. So I'm going to make that observation on my own. So that's the observation I'm going to make for number one. All right, and this time I'm going to put P71, P71, that's where I got my observation from, and I'm just going to put many people live in the area along the north, east, northeast, coast of the U.S. And that's good enough. That's true. Many people live in the area along the northeast coast of the U.S. And I got that from page 71. So I want you to take five minutes and find four more observations. Or if you don't like mine, replace it with your own. Okay, go ahead and do that now. All right. Now we're ready to actually start looking at the questions. So question one, open your student atlas to page 96 and find China. So that's the first thing I do is I go to page 96. And there's China. It's easy to find. No, no need to look around. China's right there. So I've got China. Now, what was the next step? The next step is, what is the capital city? Well, if you remember, capital cities were circles with stars. So we've got to find a circle with a star that is in the purple country of China. And if we're looking around, we get a right there. Now, this is hard. Is it going to be Tianjin or Beijing? Well, there's the circle with the star, and then here's a dot next to it. So I'm going to tell you that the dot belongs to Tianjin and the circle with the star is Beijing. So there's your capital city of China right there, Beijing. 
So everybody write Beijing on your answer sheet. So we go to answer sheet number one. B E I J I N G semicolon. All right, and now we go back to our chart. What countries border China to the north? List each country and its capital. Hint, there are only three. So we need three countries and three capitals. China to the north. Well, if this is China, if you've forgotten which direction north is, look at the compass rows here. North is up. So if this is China and we go north, here's our three countries. Straight up, you've got Kazakhstan. Straight up, Mongolia. And straight up, you've got Russia. So our three countries are Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Russia. But let's do country and capital. So Kazakhstan, and what is the capital of Kazakhstan? Look really closely. It's Astana. So that's what we're going to put first. We're going to put Kazakhstan, K-A-Z-A-H. No, I messed up. No. K-A, I messed that up. K A, I gotta look at it. K A Z A K H S T A N, comma, and what's the capital? Astana. A S T A N A, semicolon. And then we want the next set. So the next set was Mongolia. So we're gonna put M O N G O L I A, Mongolia, comma, and I don't have enough room, so I'm going to the next line. What is the capital of Mongolia? Look at look at your map. It's Ulan. U. I can't see it. There are two L's or one there. Holy cow. That's really tiny. Uh, two, one L, two A's. One L and two A's. Ulan Bat. Well, look at all the A's in that. A, A, N, B, A, A, T, A, R. Man. The A city. U, let me zoom back out. L, A, A, N, B, A, A, T, A, R. Ulan Batar. Semicolon. And then the last one was Russia. R U S S I A. And I happen to know that the capital of Russia is not on that map. Look at that. Look at your map. There's Russia. Now, over here where the R and the U is, why is that gray? Well, that's gray because that region is not part of Asia. That region is part of Europe. And that region is where Russia's capital is. So I'm going to have to tell you that we can do two things. I can either tell you what Russia's capital is, or we can go to a Europe map and find Russia's capital. Let's see, where is the Europe map? Asia. Well, here's Europe right there. Africa. There's Europe. So now I'm in the Europe section. So now I'm going to turn back. Population. There we go. There's Europe. It's on page 84. Now here's Russia. See, there's the other half of Russia. That's the European half. And there is my city with a star, Moscow. And you may have already known that that was Moscow. So, Russia, comma, Moscow, M-O-S-C-O-W. Okay, and that's the end of number one. So, we're going to skip a line and put a number two. And we got to go back to page 96, where we started from before we can answer number two. So now I'm on page 96. Number two. Read it with me. Now look at the longitude and latitude lines on the map. Okay, let's do that. Longitude lines go up and down. And latitude lines go left and right. And they're curved. They're curved because it's a round map or it's a round earth. Remember the longitude lines run long ways up and down the map and curve slightly towards the center top. 
Latitude lines are like the rungs on a ladder and curve on both ends. Oops, sorry about that. What two latitude lines is almost all of China in between? What two latitude lines? Those are the ones that go back and forth. All of China. Well, here's the purple China. So I need a latitude line and two latitude lines that include most all of China. So let's do the bottom one is right here. This latitude line includes all of China. Okay. So that would be 20 degrees north. And then this latitude up here includes almost all of China except for this little part here. And so what latitude line is that? Well, we're going to follow that up. There it is. Can you see that number? 50 north. So that's our answer for, that's our first answer for number two is 20 north, comma, 50 north, period, or semicolon. Okay. Let's take a look back here. What two latitude lines? Now look at the longitude lines. Which two longitude lines is almost all of China in between? Okay. So we go back to, now this time we're looking for lines that run up and down. So we go all the way here to the east. And let's use this one because it's got almost all of China except that little part right there. Just ignore that bell. That's not you guys. It just means it's time for me to go home. Huh? That chance. Okay, so anyway, here's the longitude line. So which line is that? Well, let's follow this down to where it's easier to see the, the numbers. And look at that. Guess what? There's no number there. But what do I do? Well, I have a number here. And I have a number here. So if this is 120 and this is 140 east, what's that one? Hands up. Right, 130 east. Okay, so... We're going to put 130 east for the first one, comma. Okay, now how about the western, or the one to the other side? Let's use, uh, here we go, look at that. We've got a latitude line. There's some China. No, that's Kyrgyzstan, isn't it? Yep, that's Kyrgyzstan. So China ends here. So let's use this longitude line right there. That's the one that we're going to use because that's got almost all of China in it. So let's go down here and it is, there it is, 80 east. So we got 130 east and 80 east. All right. Number three. What? What large island nation is off of China's east coast? Okay, well, let's go back to our map. China's east coast. Look at your, which direction is east. So where's China's east coast? Over here. And we want the large island nation. Okay, right off of China's east coast. And there it is. I know you don't think that's very large, but they do. That's the nation right off of China's east coast. This nation would be off of their southeast coast. See how it goes southeast? This comes straight off of their east coast. So that's what we want. What's the name of that nation? Is it going to be Taipei or Taiwan? Hands up. Right. Taiwan because it's all caps. Okay. We go back to our sheet here. Number three, Taiwan. T A I W A N. Okay. Anything else for number three? Nope. Number four. Now look at the map on page 97 and find China. Okay. Well, let's go to page 97 and find China. There's 97, but remember, countries aren't listed on these green maps. But this is China here. Okay, that's China there. All right. Let me get a better, better picture for this map. Let's, let's roll it to there. 
there. So there's China. All right, now we got China. Let's find out what our question's asking. Number four, find the North China Plain. Well, where's the North China Plain? North China. There's the North China Plain right there. See it? Let me zoom in. There's the North China Plain. Okay, now let's see what we're supposed to do. What are the four latitude longitude lines that enclose the North China Plain? Well, there's North China Plain. One, two, three, four. Now you follow these lines out and tell me what they are, what their numbers are. And you don't forget to put the N's and the E's up for each number. Okay? Do that now. All right, now let's do number five. Yeah, I'm not going to give you the answer to the rest of these questions one by one. Okay, I might put it on the internet, but I'm not giving it to you guys. Let's do number five. Now find the Manchurian Plain in China. Hint, it's just northeast of the North China Plain. Okay, so North China Plain, Manchurian Plain, northeast, right there, Manchurian Plain. We found that. What does it ask us to do? What are the four longitude latitude lines that enclose the Manchurian Plain? Okay, well there they are, latitude lines that way. So follow that line all the way up and find out what its, what its number is. Follow that line all the way up, find out, follow this line down, follow that line down. Do that now. Okay, number six. Let me zoom out a little bit. Now turn to the populations map on page 98. Okay, stop right there and do that. So I'm going to 98. Here's my populations map. Okay. All right, so now I'm there. Using cardinal, where am I at? Oh, here we go, sorry. Using cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, which region of China is the most populated? Okay, stop right there. You look at China. Now, here's China. This is not China. This is India. This is China. Look at the borders. Which region, north, south, east, or west, is most populated? I'll give you a second to write that answer in for number six. Okay, let's continue with number six. Use the climate and annual precipitation maps on page 100 to explain why the eastern half of China is so much more popular than the western region of China. Okay, well, look here. Let's go to page 100. Here is climate. And then down here is annual precipitation. So... We are trying to find out why, let's compare both maps together, why so many people live over here and why nobody lives over here. So we look at the climate map. This green climate, what kind of climate is it? This brown climate, what kind of climate is it? Let's take a look at annual percentage rainfall. All right. Let me get my book here. Let me see if I can't do it this way. There we go. How much rain do they get on this side of China? How much rain do they get back here? Okay, so using that information, you explain why. What does it say for number six? Explain why the eastern half of China is so much more populated than the western region of China. All right, do that now. Okay, number seven. Now turn to page 99 and look at the land use and resources map and find China. Okay, so 99, let me go back one page, land use and resources map, a lot of stuff on this map. Okay, all right, so we got the land use and resources map. Here's your key, land use, resources. Here's what the colors mean. Here's what all the symbols mean. All right, and there's China. Remember, look closely at where the border of China is. Okay? All right, now we're ready. 
list five resources found in China today. Five resources. Now look here. These colors are not resources. This is the way the land is used. These symbols are resources. So you want to find five resources. That doesn't mean just because it's on here that it's in China. Because this map is for all of Asia. So find me, just list any five resources you see. Do that now. Number eight. Now turn to page 100 and look at the annual precipitations map again. How much rain, oh, let's go to 100, sorry. Let's go to 100 first. Right, there we go. Let me go back to my directions. How much rain does most of western China receive each year? Hint, there is no compass rose on this map, so remember that east is to the right and west is to the left. So how much rain does most of western China receive each year? So we go back to our map, and this is China, this is east, and this is western China. So go ahead and answer that question. Next question for number eight. Now read the paragraph, sorry, now read the paragraph to the right of the map. When you read the paragraph, look back, sorry, when you read the paragraph, look back at the map at the different regions it mentions. Now explain why western China gets so much less rain than India to the south. Okay, so here's western China and here's India. Look how much rain India gets. Look how much rain or how little rain Western China gets. It's a huge difference. Let's read the paragraph. The countries of South and Southeast Asia experience the most rainfall. This is South Asia and this is Southeast Asia. Or sorry, this is Southeast Asia over here. This is all South and Southeast Asia. This rainfall occurs primarily between the months of April and October. Warm, moist winds from the south, called monsoons, bring the rain to this part of the continent and also pile snow deeply upon the peaks of the Himalayas. Now, if you don't remember, the Himalayas are right in here. This is where the Himalayas are. So they get a lot of snow. Back to our paragraph. The monsoons do not reach the interior of the continent, which remains dry throughout the year. The driest countries are in the south west. So monsoons blow this way, okay, and bring rain. They blow this way and bring rain. So I'll let you answer the question. Explain why western China gets so much less rain than India to the south. And if you have to, reread that paragraph again and figure that question out. All right. Now, once you're finished with that, I want you to get a blank China map. Oh, yeah, I'll get one. There's a blank China map. And work through these activities. First, use the map on R10 in the Ancient Civilizations textbook. Find the Changjiang River and trace it with a blue fine tip marker or colored pencil, then label it. Now find the Huanghe River and do the same. Second, find the Himalayas and write Himalaya Mountains under them in the gray area under the mountain range. Third, now shade the mountain range, mountain areas brown, the desert areas yellow, and the plain regions green. Okay, and you can do that all on this map.